Morning. Right, we did two uh, watercolours yesterday, and I'm back to I'm trying to do a an abstract expressionist painting. If my jargon sounds familiar to those that do this sort of thing. I'm uh, copying it from uh, Sky Taylor. So I'm, I'm learning a lot about this this method of painting. I love doing it. You never know how it's going to go. You make it up as you go along. It doesn't have any intellectual connotations. It's just paint, having fun with the paint, colour and movement, and that's straight from Sky Taylor. And I'm, I'm sure that's uh, how Park Pollock did all his wonderful drip paintings. He just went at it. The fact that, that uh, psychologists are still trying to fathom out whether there was any inner message, well, good luck to them. There's nothing in my in my abstract expressionist paintings. I'm demonstrating for you, or I'm on my journey, and you're with me. We're sort of doing it together, and you'll be surprised who like who likes these. I put my last abstract. I called it uh, Poppies on a, our sort of Wallington Town Facebook. There about ten thousand subscribers to it. And it's had over 30, 30 uh, likes already. So I'm pretty pleased about that. So, and that is more than my top notch watercolours get on, on that particular site. So there are a lot of people that like this sort of painting. Maybe they like to try and fathom out what's in our heads when we do it. But it's really just having fun with the paint. And you've got to start somewhere. I would have done, I've, I've, I've primed a piece of Saunders paper it was over a, a, a failed watercolor abstract so I don't mind I'm just running out of space in my studio I've got hundreds well thousand a thousand YouTube demos more than that probably so I just paint over the ones that aren't I don't consider to be good very good so uh, we'll, we'll make a mark we'll, we'll go we'll go in with a bit of blue ultramarine blue and just just make a mark, this is the way Sky approaches it. Sort out a light area, just go over that. And I'll uh, put a bit of green, a bit of yellow, a bit of white. I think when you start, don't go go in too thick with it. You build it up as you as you go along. Create a really the idea is to cover the the ball paper canvas first, and then just as you, as it appears to you, just just go in and paint away a bit of grey. Clean the brush. Okay, if you're you're very sort of tight in your technique, this is the sort of thing that frees you up. And some of my best paintings, I think, you will agree with the watercolours anyway, are the freely painted ones, the ones I make up. So to that extent, they're they're what uh, are called intellectual abstraction. Where you have put some thought into it, to what you're actually going to do, and it bears some semblance of reality, not a lot, but a bit of poker in there. I'm not planning anything on this. This, this is a what we used to call in the sixties a happening. And as it dries, you can blend. But this is quite small, it's only about 15 by 11. Which is a sort of format I like with the, with the, with the watercolours. It's a convenient size. 
I've got my mounts cut up to it and I'm going to put some lead in there and I uh, can't remember what I was going to say oh yes uh, I've got I, I, I've got a quite a large room here but it's crammed with uh, all my art materials it's got it's got a quite big SIBO vacuum cleaner uh, which I got for five quid Five pounds, uh, an ironing board, a couple of errors, the top of the house in this loft conversion. Very lucky to have this space, but if I had a nice big warehouse floor somewhere that somebody else was paying for, ah, oh, well, I'd be doing great big ones like Rothko. Job of tea. You get really, really caught up in this. Let's just put a wedge of, of grey, sort of complementary red to that, that green. I don't usually use a lot of sap green, I prefer the Viridian, but, but since we're experimenting, we'll try different colours. It's a good shortcut to green, but the Viridian has a an amazing range of colours, uh, brilliant cold, greeny blues, you mix it with white or mix it with, with lemon yellow. Bit of grey, so I think put grey in, put some of the moss. Okay, I'm going to mix a bit of that red with a bit of yellow now, make a bit of orange. I've got orange but, but hey, Sort of grey. When you mix white with anything, it turns into grey, green grey, or blue grey. I'm starting to thicken up a little, a little bit now, but I'm going to have to lay off a little bit. Oh, I want some of that darker colour in there now, because otherwise. It's just a lot of clouds. Okay, now that's very muted. So, I look a bit. Oh, I'm going to clean my brush. I'm not going to dip it in the water. Just squeeze out the paint. Egg. Okay, let's go back with some nice light. I think light looks a bit better when you've got a bit of, bit of ochre in it. No, it's not, not quite dry. This will dry much quicker when, it's, when we hit uh, the, the spring. No, I didn't mean that. I wanted that red and the yellow. Right, oh, let's uh, lighten up that other side down here a little bit now. Now then, I sort of did some push-pull type of strokes, which seemed to, to work and caused the poppies. That just evolved. I had no intention of doing poppies, just how it, how it was. And keep working at it until something exciting happens. Colour and movement, that's the, the key. 
Okay, right. But that's nice and grey. Right, let's uh, go back into that light area. It's all going rather grey now. It's the grey painting. Mixing ultramarine with blue. Let's go a little soft. No, I'm not thinking, I'm just putting the paint on. One of my subscribers, and you'll see him on Facebook, Dennis Hopkins, he's been following me for a while and he, he's uh, was doing my watercolours, copying my watercolours and making some progress. But when I started doing this, he started to do it for himself and he's produced, he's produced a couple of really good, good paintings. Okay, now that's coming on, there's something happening there, there's nice, pleasant, light and dark, um, complementary colours. I don't know if do it, make it too obvious. Right, I don't want to put too much detail around the edge of this. I'll use another brush. I'm, I'm using these inch and a half uh, varnish brushes. Let's go in with a bit of, bit of greeny grey in this corner here. Just a compliment. Green on red, it's very obvious, but hey. Okay, let's clean, let's clean the brushes. I, I don't believe that, as you know, of using the largest, largest brush possible. And only going on to small brushes when you get desperate. A bit of nice ochre and a bit of white. To fill that, just add a bit of brightness to that corner here. quite like that. I'm going to put that in the mount. Uh, 
finish my tea. Right, I'm going to take that down just a little bit so I can get the mountain. Just to give an idea of what it would look like. If it was frames behind glass. See, the, 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 the uh, ones on watercolour paper need to be mounted behind glass with a good mount to show them off at their, their best or their worst. So there we are. Let's just clip that up there. Clip that there. Bit of tape at the bottom. Hold on, I'm masking you. I know. Right, okay, so there we are. We we have another abstract. Let's come out of that. Sorry about the close area in the distance. So there we are. We've we've got another totally, absolute original. It doesn't exist in any other painting. It's mine. And have a go yourselves, have some fun. Sort out your your watercolours that you don't, you don't like and and get the acrylics out. I use acrylics because they dry so quickly and they're non-toxic. They're fantastic paints to use. Uh, there you are, nothing more to say about that. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Bye bye.